Hi everyone, this is Alan McKay and welcome to a new video. I'm super excited to be putting this video out. I'm sure everybody has heard of Beeple at this point. He's the third most valuable living artist on the planet, all because he sold a JPEG for $69 million at the Christie's auction, which is insane. So not to mention that other NFTs he's been selling and other artists have been doing similar results as well. It's really crazy to think of how much things have changed in the last couple of months. So right now, I can't even turn the TV on without seeing Beeple's face all over the damn TV, even on CNN and other channels being interviewed. And I think it's really crazy how quickly things have changed at the moment. And so I want to put together a few specific videos related to NFT very soon, but I wanted to sit down with Beeple and talk about his creative process and how he got to where he is through having a strict routine of every day doing his every days. In other words, creating art every single day, showing up, putting in the work and getting it out there and what it takes to get into that habit, as well as how to stay consistent and not burn out and not to let people online affect your mentality when it comes to whether your work's really good or whether they think it's really bad or everything else in between. So there's a lot that we're gonna get into and I thought I'd share this conversation because I think that there's so many value bombs in this video that you'll be able to take and apply to your creative output right now. So just quickly, I've been MIA for the last two months. I've kind of been going down a rabbit hole. I've been working on a new course for the last six months and I wanted to put the finishing touches on that. And this is essentially more of a branding and business course specifically for artists on how to build your name in the industry, how to attract clients, how to launch your own freelance business and how to get paid premium rates and everything else in between. So there's a lot that's going on there and finally it's almost done and I'm finally starting to crawl my way out of my rabbit hole and, and get back on track. So my goal is I'm gonna be starting to release a lot of videos one to two times a week moving forward. I'm really excited for that and that's why I need to kind of shut down and get through all this first, but I'm hoping that this will be the first video of many to come over the next few weeks. So like I said, in this video, I wanna sit down with Beeple and talk about his creative process, what it takes for him to get to where he is today. And this literally is a blueprint for his creative process. And we go deep into so many different topics. I cannot recommend this video enough because of all the insights that Beeple shares about his success that you can start applying to your creative process today. So super excited. If you like this video, smash the thumbs up and subscribe. And like I said, I want to be sending you more and more content every single week moving forward. Okay, let's dive in. Cool, Mike. So do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Sure. So my name is uh, Mike Winkleman. I make work under Beeple. Um, I am a sort of graphic designer, I would call myself from. I live in Charleston now. Um, I do a lot of like concert visuals. Um, and I've been doing, I've got a couple other sort of personal projects that uh, I've been doing for the last few years here. Uh, I do a picture every day, the everyday thing. And then I also I used to do a lot more like VJ clips. Uh, I don't do as much now. I do like more like weirdo, gross, short <laughs> films uh, and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, that's pretty much kind of. I love it. What I do. A um, couple of quick questions. I was curious, like for you growing up, did you always want to be an artist? No, actually, I wanted to be a. Uh, I wanted to make video games. I really love video games and I really wanted to make video games. And then I, so I went to school for computer science and probably about halfway through, I realized I was spending like all my time making like art things. And, and I also saw a, a number of people who really wanted to make video games. And, and then it was like, Oh, okay. Now you're going to make video games. I'm not going to make video games. Like you're, you are, yeah, you want this way more than I want. <laughs> and so, you know, I realized maybe something with like art or like web design would be fun. So, you know, I got a, a job doing web design outside of, you know, after I graduated and then um, like slowly started just doing this, you know, people stuff in terms of like the everydays and, and stuff like that, you know, in my free time. And then that kind of like took over and became sort of like the full time thing. That's cool. I love that. I'm just curious too, like with your background in computer science, have you ever leveraged that in 3D or in other areas? Not really. Um, I like never really 
sort of, I, I never had a job programming and you know, this is, I'm 39. So this is fucking years ago. Like this is, you know, many years ago. So I in no way consider myself remotely a programmer. And honestly, even things that are like simple programming things like that you could do like, Oh, I'm going to do some scripting and, you know, action scripting or whatever and freaking after effects or this or that. I don't even do that shit. Like I, I don't do anything like programming wise, but I do hell, think it's like, hello world. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's it, that, that those days are long over, but I do feel like it's kind of, it still helped me sort of like understand software and understand different sort of like complexities of, of things like that. So I, I feel like it's helped, but not really from like a, you know, down in the weeds tech programming standpoint. Got it. Um, yeah, I was curious because again, like doing VJ stuff, I could imagine you, you know, you could do a lot of more procedural, um, you know, more mathematical patterns, things like that. Just interesting things here and there, but, um, yeah, so, no, um, some but not that much like a lot of the stuff i do is actually not that procedural uh it's more i'm usually the person who's like let's just do it fuck it brute force i don't know how to figure out how to like you know make this procedural we're just gonna like fucking wing it nobody's gonna know it's not procedural <laughs> it's like brute force fake uh that's usually actually more my method that's cool. Um, I, I just want to dive right into the daily art, get that out of the way. Um, I, I just think it's really fascinating. And I think that it kind of ties into what you're saying, kind of brute forcing everything. I imagine there's a, a bit of that in there, but uh, you, there's a lot. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I mean, obviously like what inspired you to start doing daily pieces of art and what it is that you're, you're typically doing. Sure. So what inspired me was many, many years ago. Um, and I've been doing it for, 13 and a half years um, is I wanted to get better at drawing. And so I saw a artist in the UK named Tom Judd who did a sketch a day in like a book and he released it. And, and I saw this after he'd already done it. I, and I don't know if he was uploading it as he was doing it or not. And this is, you know, back in 2006, 2005. Um, and so I saw that and it was like, oh, this is really cool. Like, you know, he did a sketch a day and you can kind of see the progression and this and that. So that's what I did the first year. I did a sketch every day. And so after that year was over, I like learned a lot. I was still terrible at drawing, but I learned a ton that year. And it like pushed me to like try a bunch of different things that I'd never tried before. Different techniques, different, you know, mediums of drawing and this and that. And so I had always wanted to learn like 3D. And so I was like, I wonder if I could do a, a render every day, uh, you know, and have that be a way to like teach myself 3D. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do a, a render in Cinema 4D every day to sort of like learn it. And you can go back and look at those first ones. And I'm very much like starting at like absolute zero, like, holy crap, I can make reflections. This is amazing. <laughs> like just very, very simple things. It's looking like so, all 3D cafe you stuff. Know, what's up? You remember 3D cafe back in the day? I never use it. And I really never used anything before Cinema 4D. I feel like I used like Bryce or, or Poser or something like a tiny bit. I don't even remember for what, but like very, very little. Well, 3, 3D cafe is really quickly. It was an old 3D uh, website. I kind of like uh, high end 3D, you know, showed a lot of stuff like Maya work, stuff like that. 3D cafe would have like a lot of, personal 3d work people would post in the 90s um, oh, okay. but the funny thing is it, would, it pretty much was like 90 percent bryce and poser so that's funny <laughs> yeah it's definitely those early days like i was very like i really before i got into 3d i wasn't that like sort of like aware of it or like following it really it was more just like oh man that that, that was that's the thing I, I you know i'd love to to always eventually do just because it seemed like it was like, well, if you can do something in 3D, like you can do kind of anything, like, because it's sort of like, it can incorporate all of the other things. It can incorporate drawings, it can incorporate animation. It can like, it's sort of, to me, the most exciting sort of like medium because it can bring in all of the rest of the mediums. You know, you can composite it with footage. You can like, it, it can, there can be elements of, of just about everything else in, you know, that sort of like package. That's so cool. And I'm curious too, like with you switching from 2D to 3D, like th that's always been my thing where as soon as things go into 3D, 
I feel like they're going to take three times as long and things are always going to go wrong. Nothing is as predictable in 3D. And, you know, I'm kind of curious for you, did you find that there was that kind of stutter in there that, you know, kind of set back having to switch to there and, and not be able to intuitively just detail something out or add something over here? Or did you find that over time through repetition, you just made things intuitively be faster? Mm, no, I wouldn't say it was that much of a like uh, hindrance like that, mostly because I, I was pretty shitty at 2D as well. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm fucking baller at 2D. Like, <laughs> 3D shit's hard. Like it was like, well, I, I don't have that many skills that like, you know, because again, like you were talking three, four years out of like college. I never went to art school. I was doing pretty simple like you know, website stuff. So I wasn't doing, it wasn't like, oh man, I'm like a master of Photoshop. Like, and now this 3d thing is like, holy crap, rock my world. Like it's, I didn't know. I, I, you know, I knew some after effects, but again, I wasn't like crazy good at that either. So it was sort of like, it wasn't that hard. It was more like, wow, I've got like so many more options for what I can do now. Like, you know, and again, this was, I think the other thing that like helped and I'm very thankful for is, this was, you know, before social media, before fucking Instagram, Facebook and all this shit. So it was one of those things where it's just like, you could just suck for years and like nobody fucking saw it and there was no pressure and it was just like, whatever, you just put out shit. And, and there was no, like, it, it just was whatever the fuck you want to do. And like, there, it just didn't have the like weight that I feel like young artists feel now to like, everybody's going to see this and it's like, you know, uh, it's just different. So I, I'm kind of thankful that I was able to start when, when you know, before all this noise. So I'm um, just to jump ahead a bit. I'm kind of curious about that too. Like now that, especially now that you have such a, a massive audience looking at your stuff, like, do you ever feel that kind of pressure of you know, hey, I got to get this out, or this isn't good enough, you know, for everyone who's going to be jumping on here and looking at all my stuff, like there's a set level of expectation that all eyes are going to be on my work. Uh, yes and no. I do understand that everybody or not everybody, but some people will see this. I understand that, you know, a number of people will see what I put out. So I feel like that, you know, is kind of good in a way it's good and bad. It's, I think it's good because it like, you know, it, makes you want to try harder because you're like, okay, people are going to fucking see this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where I think it's really good. And that's where I think if you're doing it every day, it's like releasing it publicly, I think will make you try harder because you don't want to just put out a pile of shit. So it's very motivating. And I know like when it's like a couple days in a row or it's like, ah, I kind of phoned it in the last few days, they got to fucking really try here. <laughs> this is fucking like, this sucks. Um, and I start just kind of feeling like, nah, this, this is freaking garbage. And so it's good in terms of that. Um, I, I don't really feel like it's ever been that, that, like that sort of like pressure is good. I don't really feel like there's, there's ever that much pressure on me though, because one, I look at one, I've never like had this like big thing happen to me where it's like, Oh my God, I just got like a bazillion fans. Like it's been a bit pretty slow progression uh over time so there's never been like this huge sort of like leap of like oh my god everybody's looking at me now which i feel like would probably be extremely like paralyzing for a lot of mm. artists if suddenly like there's a huge amount of like the eye of fucking sauron is you know pointed at you um and the other thing i i look at and i think about and and that's where another sort of like advantage to the everydays is the picture that I put out tomorrow will be one, one, you know, one, almost 5,000 of this project. I look at the everydays as like one project. And so each picture I'm putting up is less and kind of matters less and less and less and less and less and less as I put out more pictures. So, you know, each one is just a tiny piece of this bigger thing that I'm doing. So that also kind of like, it allows me to sort of like take the pressure off and it's like, it is what it is. Uh, and the other thing is I know I spent like two hours on this and I have a, a pretty realistic expectation for like, 
you know, what is can be accomplished in two hours. And I was like, it's not going to be a fucking masterpiece. It's two fucking hours. Like, what the fuck are you talking? It's a sketch. To me, the everydays are sketches. They're fucking sloppy. There's tons of fucking, you know, this or that. They're anything you make in two hours. That's not like going to be like a fucking, you know, I don't know, it is what it is for two hours. So that's another thing where I kind of like, you know, take it down a notch. That's awesome. Um, I got a buddy of mine, Justin LaDuke. He created that Red Grim Reaper. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah I met him in, in Toronto briefly. Yeah, really nice guy. Um, I guess, like, for me, it was kind of interesting seeing, like, I started watching his work and noticing he's posting, I think, on average every three days. And that was just something that I didn't realize, like, you know, every post he did was with the intent to go viral. And, like, I, I didn't realize he kind of bit, was putting that pressure on himself that, you know, every post has to be the one that's going to blow up. And the thing is that it, it kind of sucks to look at it now that he finally got that. He, he got that post that everybody would see and he's posted five pictures in the last two years because of that. And I, I only bring that up because I feel like it, it is exactly what you're talking about, where you suddenly get this instant result and then this invisible pressure is on you that, you know, every piece is, is going, if I post a bad piece, I'm going to lose 20,000 followers or whatever. So you kind of paralyze yourself. And, uh, and to be yeah. honest, I've seen that a number of times over the years that people like, you know, something blows up and then they put out another thing and almost invariably it doesn't do as well, just because it's sort of like, there's so much kind of just lightning in a bottle with this shit mm -hmm. where it's just kind of like, you know, who the fuck knows the right time, the right day, the right, you know, maybe it was the right person just fucking reblogged it or some shit. Uh, and, and you know, then it blew up. So it's so, so random. So I feel like that that's the other thing where every day is kind of remove that option to be like, well, you know, this has to go viral and I'm not going to release it till I think it's going to go viral. It's like, no, you got to fucking do it every day. And that's right. a, a question I get a lot is, do I like bank these up? It's like, no, each one is done start to finish that day and post it somewhere before midnight. And so it's, there's no, there's no like, well, I'm going to, you know, piddle with it for a few more days until it's like perfect it's like no nope, it has to be done so i feel like that's another thing that kind of like a, a little sort of mechanism that doesn't allow what you're talking about to kind of like happen to me and i think that says a lot about why you're doing it because you're not doing it necessarily for everyone else you're doing it for yourself otherwise i'm doing yeah, it to get better i'm doing it way. because i fucking suck and i still suck at so many so many so many things and i need to get better and i look at kids who are fucking it's changed <laughs> over the years before yeah. it was like i saw these people and it's like you know i fucking suck like and i did suck and, and it's like i need to get better and so it was like, I, I desperately want to get better. Now it's kind of switched to like, okay, I'm a little bit older. I've been around for a while. This is fucking 23 year old kid coming up. I got a fucking, you know, this kid's fucking amazing. So it's like, you know, those are the things that are like motivating now. So it's kind of changed over the years from like, okay, I, I've done a couple things here and there, but now I got to fucking stay ahead of this damn kid. It's, it's always, always been about like, God damn it. This fucking sucks. It needs to be better. And, and it's like very much something I deeply, deeply believe. No, that's, that's cool. And I think you're right. Like it's, I think these days the tools are a lot easier. So before, you know, it was a lot, there's a bigger learning curve. So there weren't as many people doing it now, especially ZBrush, you can just pick things up and start knocking stuff out. So, you know, not having that barrier of resistance means that anyone can just start outletting their talent and, and do the things that they want. So it means that, yeah, you go on art station and there's 15 year olds who are doing stuff that's just, mind blowing and it's just like kidding right. me? <laughs> yeah i mean that's the thing too i think about that sometimes i think about the things that i learned that are just you know when i was that age they're just totally useless like i spent years with like fucking flash and yes. it's just then it's just like gone doesn't matter all that time you spent learning flash go ahead and just stuff that in the trash like that's done <laughs> and so it's like the kids coming up now they're learning you know yeah, they're learning these things. They can just download fucking Blender and it's goddamn amazing. Like it's even 10 years ago, having the capabilities in Blender now, it'd be like, mm -hmm. 
wait, what? You can just fucking click a button and it does a, a whatever. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's like mind blowing the, the things that are like, you know, free mm-hmm. that, that people can just like download and use immediately. So yeah, it's that it's definitely um, interesting. And I think as the tools sort of like progress and get easier and better, it also kind of like ups the expectations. Like, you know, I, I think about um, when I was, this is probably like six years ago, maybe. I remember I was using V-Ray or something like that. And, and people were like, oh man, those reflections on the ground look so sweet. And it's like, and now it's like blurry reflections or something like that, you know, which was not hard, but it was more sort of like, time consuming to render and so it was a little bit more like appreciated a little bit more like even Mm -hmm. i too was like man those reflections on the ground look freaking badass (laughs) and now that's like this uh, you don't even think about that now because it's like nothing it's like that's just part of the like package so it's it's interesting how people's like expectations go up as the like technology goes up yeah definitely it's not going to be price level anymore i mean even when caustics became a thing like uh even though most people don't even bother using them but yeah you get certain features that you've you got to appreciate the fact that they're there even soft shadows stuff like that for you know oh yeah for sure things like that yeah it's like those were very time consuming where it's like no you don't check that box that's gonna take four hours longer don't check that (laughs) box whatever you do don't hit this box yeah i'm curious with um with having that kind of daily practice to get better and and that's your reason behind it is you know to be able to iterate and get faster and better at what you're doing have you applied that to any other aspects of your life where you wanted to learn photography or i don't know work out every day whatever it might be that you're like hey if i just do this every day i'll be better i have not remotely (laughs) and that's where i would actually say i'm not that disciplined a person Like I, there's other things that it's like, I'll pick up things and I'll like try it. And then, you know, I'll just stop doing it. And and so it's like, I feel like this is really the only thing. And I feel like there's certain things like, for instance, like exercising or something like that. Like I like running, but then you get hurt and it's like, Mm -hmm. well, I can't run now. Like I, I can't just keep doing this. It'll just make it worse. So it's like it, the outside factors kind of like stop you from doing it. So that's where I, thought a lot about how I can stop any outside factors from like stopping me from doing this. So that's kind of like, you know, very much by design of of how I sort of structure or so how I have sort of structured things. But yeah, outside of this, no. And to be quite honest, like I'm not super well-rounded. Like I pretty much work constantly and like, I I don't have like a bunch of other like hobbies or like things that I do. I, I work, spend time with the family that's pretty much it. Like, and I'm so pretty um, sort of, we're sitting here a lot of the day. No, yeah, I totally get that. that. I mean, I think that you could easily overload things too. Like, okay, I just got to do this every single day. Then you're, you're looking at your calendar of the 10 things you're doing daily. And- this is my day. It's like 60 like things. No, I, and honestly, like, this is really like the only thing that I like super care about getting better at. Like, there's not really anything like, oh man, I really wish I could get better at woodworking or blah, 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 or this or that. Like, I don't give a shit about anything else besides getting better at like specifically this art. I like that. And you're more of a, like, what's your typical routine? You're more of a morning person as well, right? Uh, I used to be now I would say are, are I've kind of like gone through phases. Like when I fir- very first started out, like out of college, like I would have the fucking weirdest schedule and I'd stay up like all fucking night and then like sleep half the day. It was like so fucked up. Uh, and now it's like, I've got two kids. I've got, you know, seven year old or a seven year old and a four year old. And, and it, um, Like I go to bed around like midnight and get up at like seven. Like it's not, it's pretty like normal, I guess, overall. I'm not, I used to get up at like four 30 and like go work out and then like, you know, be into work like super early. I don't do that anymore. Got it. And I'm curious too, like with your whole journey, like, do you remember what it was like in the beginning, like where you, you know, where you were in 3d compared to now, like in terms of your, your process and just obviously every day wanting to improve, like, can you look back at, to where you were in the beginning uh, compared to now and kind of see that trajectory? Like, what was that like? 
Uh, I mean, yeah, you can definitely see it. If you go back, you can see like on my website right now, you can see the very first everydays. And yeah, there's, there's quite a trajectory. And uh, obviously the like technology has progressed too, but there's definitely quite an arc. So I think that's, that's been fun too to see. And, and that's, you know, specifically a reason that I keep that old work on my site, because I want people to be able to see like there's work from probably the oldest work on there, I would say is like 2003. That's like work that was like, okay, this is like, you know, the first thing I did when it was sort of like, okay, I'm going to start releasing work as like people. And so pretty much everything I've released as people, it, you know, it is kind of on there. And I feel like that's important, you know, for people who want to see that stuff uh, to be able to see like, this is the whole thing. There's no, there's no like, wait a second, what, how the fuck did you just start, like, you know, get super fucking great? Because I, I often see artists and it's like, I don't know how old they are. And I'll see something and it's like, well, this is not the first thing you did. This is, you know, you scroll, scroll down to the bottom of the page and it's like, yeah, that's not the first thing. That's not the first thing. For me, though, you can see the first thing and it's like, ah, that's probably the first thing you did. That's probably the first thing you did. That's pretty, pretty terrible. How do you feel about that? Like, um, if if people are like okay I'm, I'm starting to become you know pretty well known as an artist now so i'm gonna go through all my old work and start deleting the the bits and pieces that you know. i don't honestly i think it's again i i very much believe just about everything with art is like in i believe art itself is entirely subjective and so i believe almost everything around it is entirely subjective too so all these things that i'm saying is just my view and the things i like so people going back and curating their thing. If that's what you want to do, like it doesn't really like bother me. I don't think it's bad. It's just like, for me, I would rather, I'm more interested in being able to see the, like, if I'm really interested in artists, seeing the absolute full journey of like how this person got to, you know, right now or how they got to like the piece that I really care about. So for me like that that's just kind of like what i like but other people wanting to like curate and like have like a certain sort of make their image you know a certain way and sort of like hide or sort of like have some level of like mystery or this or that like i i you know that's their thing like i i don't think that's bad or anything i think that's you know there, there's right. no right answer um and was it thomas judd the uk artist yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so did you ever reach out to him at all? And yeah, yeah. I've, I've reached out to him a few times. I've never met him, though. Uh, I haven't been to the UK in quite a while. Um, so, but yeah, I definitely, definitely would love to meet him. And like, he, he's got a studio there, Animate, that does like amazing work in the UK. And, and uh, yeah, I, I sort of chatted with him a few times, but I, I've never met him. And you mentioned earlier how like some of the stuff you're doing now is more kind of weird kind of stuff or gross stuff. It's a little on the weird side. So I'm curious, like with your creativity, do you go through phases where it's like, okay, now I'm doing sci-fi for a while or now I'm doing weird shit for a while or, you know, whatever. Um, there's definitely phases in the, like the everydays. Like again, obviously start, it started out with drawing. And actually, if you go back and look at some of those drawings, there's, there's some weird shit in those drawings too. So this isn't, this isn't <laughs> actually that new. Um, and some of my like really even like some of the other work that I was doing around that time when I first started the everydays or right before I started the everydays, there was definitely some fucking <laughs> weird shit. Uh, so I feel like it's actually come more full circle than, than people like this is like a new direction. I feel like this is actually like the direction it's in now, I feel like is more my personality more than like maybe some of the other work i mean it was all my personality but it was sort of like i feel like now i can do uh i don't know just i i, I can do whatever i want um to a degree like what sort of like within the limitations of obviously my skill set i can do whatever i want it's not gonna look great but i can at least like do it to a level where you can understand what it is. You can like see that it's like, oh, okay, that's Joe Biden with his freaking dick out on the Oval Office table instead of like, what? Who is that? What? Is, what is that? I don't even know what that is. Like, where is he? Like, you know. So uh, it's definitely gone through sort of like phases, but it's it's 
not remotely sort of like premeditated. It's very much just like, and I'm not thinking like, oh, okay, three months from now, I'm going to like go into this sort of phase. It's literally just like, what can I, every single day is like, oh shit, what the fuck am I going to do today? Like, that's it. I'm not thinking about fucking three days from now. I'm thinking about today. What can I do like to get excited about working on a picture today? And lately it's been doing fucking weird whatever stuff that it's like, yeah. this is hilarious to me. You know, hopefully other people find it funny or whatever. <laughs> and so that's what's sort of like been motivating to me. It, it's like, what can I find to be like motivating to make me want to try hard? Because if I, if I'm not motivated, then it's sort of like, I won't try that hard. Right. You know what I mean? You're already doing that. You've got your commercial work that you do, you know, for clients or, or, you know, whoever it might be. And so this obviously is a bit more of an escape for you to do what you want to do, not do something that's uh, appealing to everyone else. Yeah. And, and the client work that I do, a lot of the client work that I do is, is pretty similar to any of the other, like some of it is a bit more like, I have a bit more leeway. I, I would say, I would say it's about a mix. I would say there's 50, 50, like, you know, we want what people want. And then there's definitely like, we want what we want. You know what I mean? There's plenty of, we want what we want still, where it's just like, eh, I don't think you should do it like that. It's like, eh, we don't really give a fuck. We're going to yeah, just do it how we said. <laughs> and so, you know, and to me, it's just like, okay, well, that's what they want. So they're paying for it. Like, that's what I'm going to fucking do. So, yeah. you know, in a lot of cases, it's sort of like, it's exactly what they want. They want me to kind of put my twist on it, but they want what they want. And so, you know, that's where I think personal work can be super valuable to just sort of separate that too. And it's kind of like, okay, well, you're paying the bills and mm -hmm. do it to whatever the fuck you want. Well, you let, yep. Let's make it purple. That's your logo's not purple, but okay, let's make this purple. Sure. Uh, so, and then the personal work is just like, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Nobody's paying me for this shit. Nobody's saying whatever, like I'm doing whatever I want. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a good point too, though, is that through your personal work, I'm sure that you've attracted the clients that you probably want to work with rather than it being like, Hey, I'm doing corporate logos today. It's people recognize your work and they're the ones who come to you for a certain style. So that's where it's always on a scale. It's kind of like, it, it's, you know, I definitely gotten to work on more cool things that I'm like want to work on and are excited about this or that, but there's still stuff like, and I feel like this is everybody. Like anytime you accept money for something, that person's in charge. Like that's it. Mm -hmm. And so there's definitely, even on cool, pro you know, everybody I know who works on even the coolest fucking projects, the fucking, you know, CD or some jackass comes in. Oh, what about this? Holy fucking <laughs> Christ. Jesus. They're going to justify their job. We fucking done. Hey, what are we doing here? We're just making changes for changes. Like shit like that. Like if you could be working on the coolest project, but there's still moments on there where it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Why are we changing this again? Fuck this. So it, it's one of those things where I feel like you know, uh, uh, maybe younger artists need to be a little bit more realistic. Like even at people who are, are even a couple, you know, been in the game a bit longer, they're still taking shit from somebody for money. Like that's just is, that is what it is. Yeah. I mean, as a commercial artist, you're being hired to, you know, fulfill the needs of your client, not your own. Otherwise you'd be hiring yourself. Yeah, that's what it is. And that's where to me, and we kind of talked about this before, like the difference to me in my eyes between like a designer and an artist, a designer is somebody who, who, who solves a problem for somebody else, solves somebody else's problem versus an artist is somebody who just makes whatever they want and then tries to sell it. So it's kind of like spat work. You're just sort of like, I'm going to make this thing. I hope somebody wants it. And that's where I think the whole starving artist comes in because a lot of time, nobody fucking wants it. You make this thing and it's like, Oh, this is great. And everybody is just fucking cricket. Nobody gives a shit. And, and so that's why it's very hard to like make a living truly as an artist. And I do not make a living as, you know, what I would consider an artist. I make a living in it as most of my income comes from like being a designer. People hire me to solve a problem. And I do that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
do you what's your opinion on that like on the whole starving artist thing do you think that having social media and having a platform these days it's obviously going to be i wouldn't say easier to accumulate an audience but you've got the opportunity to be able to do it compared to before internet and everything else where you're not really going to be a global name it you know it, it doesn't really exist so do you think that for artists out there having social media becomes a really powerful weapon to be able to leverage um i think it does and it doesn't i think it's definitely a powerful weapon but it's sort of it's like a weapon that everybody has so it's kind of like cancels out in a way so um it's sort of like everybody brought a gun to the gunfight so it's <laughs> kind of like well that's everybody's got a gun i mean i could shoot my gun but I guys got a gun too. So, um, and, and I think there's also a lot of like, you know, it, it, you need to look at it as a tool mm -hmm. and, and you need to look at it as something where it's like, what am I getting out of this? And what is it costing me? Because one of the things that can very much cost you is just, it fucks with your head. Like that's the whole fucking thing of it. And it fucks with my head too. So, you know, it, I'm very sort of like careful to, to not let it, you know, try and as best as I can mitigate the like negative aspects of social media, which everybody knows. So, uh, you know, I, I think it can be powerful and, and I think it's made things definitely there's far less gatekeepers because again, yeah, like you're talking about 30 years ago, it's like, well, if you're not, you know, kissing fucking JD Rockefeller's ass or whoever, and he buys your painting for $2 million, then nobody's gonna fucking know you like how the fuck are you gonna do it other than that it's there there was fewer people like I, I look at before like instagram in particular how many artists i was following and how many artists i could just name just like no uh, you know name some artists you like i could probably name 10 maybe mm -hmm. and it's like now i could name like fucking 300 so it's like i feel like it's it's accelerated a lot of things and allowed you to like follow way more people and it's got tons and tons of benefits but there's also some extremely significant sort of like it, negative aspects to it that i think you need to be very cognizant of and very sort of like vigilant to kind of like guard against how do you handle that like for you what's your mindset around the negative aspects so my mindset around the negative aspects is one, I rarely read comments, especially with like the Trump shit that I do, you know, Trump right. fucking pissing and whatever this or that. Like, I, I know there's going to be a million comments of oh, go fuck yourself, you fuck yourself, whatever. Uh, so I just not, that's not even, you can type whatever the fuck you want. I said my piece with this picture, you can take your little comments, whatever you want. And so I'm just not going to see it. So that's a big one. And I also really try hard to not look at how many likes each picture gets each day. I post it and, and like, get out of the app, mm -hmm. and, and get out of that part of the app. Like I'm definitely looking at people's things. And I, I look at people's like DMS because a lot of people at times with the like DMS from the stories, like they're more funny or interesting and it's, it's less. And it's a little bit more, I don't know. It's, it's just, there's less shittiness too. And sometimes there's like weird, funny things or this or that. Um, so that I'll see, you know, somewhat, but I, I think sort of like limiting how much you're being very conscious of the feedback that you're looking at, because when you post a picture and you just read all the comments, it's extremely, it's 100% unfiltered feedback. And so, and you don't, you, it's, it all looks the same. So you, you see something that could be like, okay, here's this, like, you know, I post a picture and there's 30 comments. And first off, you immediately focus on all the negative comments first. It could be fucking 29 comments of this is fucking amazing. And one comment of the ratio is off garbage you're immediately go to that person's thing and it's like who the fuck is this motherfucker <laughs> fucking said this you don't give a shit about the other 29 that's you right. don't give zero fucks so that's the first thing the second thing is if you saw the person that was actually posting that kind of fucking stupid this sucks and you knew them and you knew their education level and like 
what they also like, you would probably be like, okay, yeah, I don't give a shit. You don't like, it. like, but you don't know those things. So you don't know that it's like, you know, their favorite whatever is something that you find totally stupid or it's just some 13 year old kid or, you know, X, Y, Z or somebody who knows nothing about art. It's like, why would I listen to this person's like feedback? Mm. But there's no way to like know that. So you just kind of like accept their feedback is like valid when it's like, that's not valid feedback. That's just like fucking noise. It's like somebody shouting at you at a truck. You suck. Like, yeah. What are you going to listen to that person? We say, I suck. No, I it's just some jackass fucking just posting, you know, negative shit because they had a fucking shitty day on the internet. And that's the so, funny thing too. You're, you're right. I'll just cut in and say like, that, that's the funny thing is anytime that you actually do challenge those people, like, you, you know, reply nicely and say, sorry, you're having a bad day or something. They're like, yeah, I am. And it's just so funny. Like most people I've started to realize like they don't ever expect anyone to read what they're saying. And if you ever look at their profiles, like they're, trolling everything because they are having a shitty day and that's just their way of bringing everyone else down with them. And it, it is funny though. Like you could get, you know, like Ash Thorpe, boss logic, bunch of people like commenting your stuff, like great work. And you see one person who you don't know. And it's not, I don't think about that. You don't know them and they're probably really low on the spectrum. I think it's just someone says something negative and it, it cuts through, you know, the ratio is totally off. Like, all these other people are saying nice stuff. And like that one thing is enough to be like, ah, it will stick with you for days. And it's so yeah. funny that we're, we're going to build that way. And so that's where it's like, I think trying to just not see that shit, mm -hmm. uh, I think is good too. And to be honest, the, like the positive comments too can be helpful in a way, but they can also be like, you know, uh, especially once you have some level of sort of like following or this or that, like, you know, I know when I fucking phoned it in. So me reading a million comments, fucking amazing people. Yeah. It's like, okay, this was not, I didn't, it's, that's, I'm very glad you like it, but I know it's not amazing. So I feel like that's also not healthy. Like reading like fucking a bunch of people fucking jerking you off when you know, you didn't really try very hard on that. Like, I think that is not healthy either. So I feel like in general, like, you know, feedback is good, but I feel like it's, you know, being very mindful of who you're sort of like receiving feedback for, because you're, you're kind of, you know, monkey lizard brain sort of like treats it all the same and, and sort of, you know, gives just as much credence to, you know, J chick 69, whatever, 420, as it does to, you know, Ash Thorpe or fricking, you know, whatever. I think you nailed it. Like, um, cause I, I think you're absolutely right. Like two aspects of this is I've already forgotten the second one, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, like I, I think that positive and negative feedback, you, you shouldn't really take to heart. It's, I think it's good to be appreciative of that. And at the same time though, like you're not gonna, I don't think it's very healthy if you, you're taking everyone's comments like, yeah, I am the best because it's just going to, build up this make you of, complacent it's yeah. gonna make you complacent it's gonna make you think anything you put out is just automatically good if you're constantly just like it just you know I, I don't know it's just it's not it's just not that helpful it, in many many respects I, I think when you're doing stuff for social and that's why i like the fact that you're you're doing it for you you're not doing it like oh i've got to get it out there for everyone else because it's very easy to get caught up on that and that's why I mean, that's the yeah. thing i it's it's one of those things we're all humans i want people to like it and, and i want people to see it and I, i'm not like you know i'm not like this fucking monk living on a fucking mountain you know taking art and blowing it off <laughs> yeah. and uh, oh it's gone whatever you know i want people to see it and i want people to like it but i think just being cognizant of the fact that you are a human we're all humans and we're wired to like you know certain aspects and that's where fucking you know social media can be super super negative is it plays on those things it's sort of like you know they know what what people like and what what's going to keep them engaged in this and that so i feel like just being very mindful of of the sort of mind fucks that these things can present it, you know it, it will sort of like help you be able to use it and, and get the most out of it you know, without getting pissed at the tool or the the people or this or that. So I guess um, while we're on the topic of other artists and Instagram, things like that, like 
who are the artists that you typically tend to follow and, you know, respect their work and enjoy feeding off of their creativity as well? Honestly, there's so many now. I feel like it's like, again, and I feel like I go through like little sort of like phases of like things. And so it's like, even the things that I liked, like, you know, six months ago, I'm kind of like, eh, it's cool. Like I like it, but it's not the things that are like super exciting and like inspiring to me. So uh, honestly, and, and a lot of times, like I'm more drawn to like specific images. Um, so it's like, I, I don't sometimes even like see where it came from uh, at, at times. So I, I think it's, it's more um, like I'm drawn a lot more to like sort of collections of images or collections of like vibes. And right now I'm in this like weird sort of like, gross like nasty like <laughs> viney or veiny like uh you know like skinny like aesthetic sort of like i i, I don't know and, and so the people who are making that like there's a handful of artists to be honest i don't even know like a lot of their names uh and, and so those are the things that like right now I'm sort of like interested in. And, and so it very much changes. Like, again, if you go back, like, you know, three years, the work, the every days are totally different. You go back another three years, totally different. Another three years, totally different. So I, I feel like it's, it's, um, I, I just have a ton of influences that I feel like I'm kind of like throwing together. That's awesome. And I think I know the answer to this question, but, for you, how do you sit down? Like, what's your creative process? Do you sit down kind of like, I'm going to write a novel, empty blinking cursor on a white screen. Um, is that typically how you approach your work? Or do you usually have an idea in mind before you get started? No, I, I almost always have an idea in mind just because if I sit down like that, it will just, I'll, I'll kind of fall into the same sort of like things that I always do. And there's always, you know, kind of like themes, but I'll, I'll sort of like, it'll take longer and it'll just turn out shittier. So I usually have some sort of like, at least idea or direction. And it could be, it could be pretty small and it could be pretty vague, but it's sort of like, well, I've never tried, you know, doing a building with this shape, or I've never tried, you know, doing this. And, and lately it's been much more sort of like specific in terms of like, um, like direction or idea or this or that. And, and it'll kind of evolve as I'm doing it. But usually I'll go on like Pinterest or art station um, or something like that and kind of like look at just other work. Like I'm very inspired by other people's work um, and, and just look at, you know, a bunch of different work for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes or something like that and try and kind of like, you know, get some sort of like idea or I'll go to Twitter and see what's trending and like, oh, could I play off of some like thing that's happening right now, this or that. So it's very much trying to like, look at what's going on in the day. Is there something new story that I'm inspired by or this or that or something going on in the world? Um, Someone hiding in their bunker. Yeah. And something like that. And that's what I think is, is fun too, because I feel like now, like I almost look at it as like some of the stuff that I do is almost like a, a political cartoonist where it's sort of like, okay, I'm, I'm reacting to like what just happened today or, you know, yesterday or this or that, but I'm doing it instead of like, just like a sketch with, you know, just pen and paper. Uh, I'm doing it with like the most advanced, sophisticated, like 3d digital tools. Like what could we do? you know, commenting in, 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 you know, a, a very, you know, real time sort of uh, time frame with the most advanced tools, like, what could that look like? So that's what I'm kind of, that's, you know, sort of like where I'm at right now. And you mentioned earlier about phoning at home, like, are there ever times where a better question I think would be, are you very self-critical about your work after the fact? Yes, I'm very self-critical of the work after the fact, I would say probably 75% of nights. It's just like, after I'm done, it's just like, ugh. and it usually goes like pretty close to midnight. And it's sort of like almost every night, I would say, you know, the majority of nights, it's just like, Oh God, that did not fucking turn out the way. Cause a lot of times I'll have an idea. And it's like, Oh man, this would be freaking sweet. If I did this, blah, blah, blah look at it at the end and say yeah that did not turn out how i wanted it to turn out that just like the lighting looks like shit because again i run out of time because it's got to be done by midnight 
not staying up till fucking 3 a.m. tweaking on this <laughs> shit. It's got to be 100% done by midnight. So there's a very hard cutoff. So it's the, there's always like a million things where it's like, man, the values aren't how I wanted it or this fucking composition just doesn't quite work. Like, you know, how I wanted it or this like element that was like, the, this was the whole idea. You can't even see it now. Like, you know, this or that. So I, I, I'm rarely, rarely like the, the times where I'm like, oh, that turned out sweet. I feel like I just got lucky. Like, it's just like, wow, I just kind of got lucky there. Like, oh, that's, that's not bad. I just got lucky. I had a $200 light. Um, I worked in Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and I got, like, a signed frame, which I wish I could turn my camera right now so you can see it, but I've got a $200 light just fall, and it managed to land on the frame and catch it some <laughs> people, I guess. <laughs> as long as nothing else falls. Sorry. Um, no, that's great. Like, I think that's really cool to understand that. And do you think, like, the hard cutoff as well um, – kind of is your saving grace in a lot of ways like a hundred percent i think people i think people um and i'm gonna put this on a t-shirt or something i'm gonna put it on something this i feel like is my only good quote i feel like people have people do not have a lack of ideas they have a lack of deadlines i think the more deadlines you have the more it will force something out and it will force something out that probably sucks because most of your ideas are shit uh, but you have to get those shitty ideas out to get to the like few good ones. So I think the deadlines and when I don't have a deadline, I just don't do shit. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, uh, you know, I, I was working on a short film and it was like a two minute fucking short film. And I worked on it for four years and it's like, it, cause I just didn't do it. Most of that time. It wasn't like I was working on it the whole time. I just wasn't fucking doing it. Cause it was like, Oh, what am, what am I going to do? How am I going to change this? And I would kind of, you know, think about it a little bit, but then it was like, well, this is hard. I don't want to make any choices. And then I just fucking wouldn't make any choices. And then it just didn't fucking come out. And finally, when I like, I had a deadline, then it got fucking finished. Like I long story, but sort of like something made a deadline. And then, uh, you know, that it got done. So it, yeah. it, it, it forced me to make choices. So I, I very much feel like deadlines are super, super important for like, you know, creatives. Yeah. I, I think um, I always talk about Parkinson's law, like a, a task will shrink or stretch to match the finite amount of time that it has. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. There's a, a phrase, um, plato or plomo, which is silver or lead, which I think is for me, it's always like if you were to gun to your head to finish you know, um, that's going to force you to, to make the right decisions and get it done rather than having infinite freedom. Have you seen this documentary on South Park, um, Six Days to Air? No, I have not. So I saw it years ago, but I watched it again recently. And I feel like this should be almost a weekly thing to watch. And it's just their creative process, Matt Stone and Trey Parker for doing South Park, and which is why it's always so relevant. What they're tackling is that every Thursday they come in and they're, they're going to figure out before the next Wednesday what they're doing for South Park. And it goes through this creative process where they're finally delivering usually 30 to 60 minutes before airtime. And it's crazy, but one thing that I got this time around watching it that I thought was so powerful was that, you know, if they had a month to do it, it would take a month. But what would usually happen is it would cannibalize their creativity because they start to second guess themselves and start to rework things. And eventually they go backwards, not forwards. It's definitely, I've only worked on a few uh, like feature films and it was very much in the beginning. And I'm, I'm used to working most of the, the or a lot of the, the client work they do is like um, concert visuals. And with concert visuals, there's no time for like, it's fucking, oh shit, we got a fucking national headlining stadium tour in three weeks. Like, and we need, you know, an hour of content. So it's just it's fucking just, you know, there, there's not a lot of time for fucking around like that. But it was it was interesting in the in the the concept work that I did for feature films where it was just like, you know, just a week would go by. And it's just like, it's like, wait, so you want me to spend an entire week just on like this one like frame? <laughs> it's kind of like yeah, on this one like tiny like concept. Like, okay, I mean, I can, but it was definitely just like, it felt like it was like, eh, this seems like it could be moving faster. And then, you know, towards the end, obviously fucking crunch time, people are <laughs> sleeping under desks and blah, blah, blah. Cause it's like, well, now there's deadlines. 
deadlines. Now there's a real deadline. So yeah, I, I definitely think, you know, if, if you can impose deadlines on yourself, it's, it will, it will help you put out more work and, uh, you know, I, I think, it will help you put out more work. It might not be better, but it will definitely be more versus, and, and something is always better than nothing. I feel like your creative process has changed over time as you got more momentum and figured out like what works, what doesn't? A hundred percent. It's completely changed. Um, it's changed because uh, one, the, probably the biggest thing is the tools have changed. And, and so things that were just, you wouldn't even think of doing before are now like, you know, very much possible. Um, the, the, um, I, I think the other thing that's changed is my, my sort of like the work I'm doing has changed. Like I used to do again, like much more sort of like abstract, very geometrical about color and form and just trying to like, I just want to create like a pretty picture that has, you know, there's no narrative. There's no sort of like message. It's just like, here's a fucking dope looking squiggle or whatever and the line through it. And there you go. That looks freaking sweet. Um, and so back then, like I had like a process for creating work like that. And, and then slowly over time. And, and again, like when I first started 3d, I uh, like, I didn't know how to model. Like I was literally starting at like, you know, nothing. So it was like, okay, well I want to, you know, learn how to model. So I modeled everything from like scratch each day. And so as time went on, it's like, well, I don't really, I'm not really that interested in modeling. I really like, I'm interested in telling more like narrative sort of like stories. And so it's like, you know, it got to the point where it's like, okay, well, if I want a tree, you know, then I just want a tree. I don't want to model a tree. I just want a tree in the scene. So then I started using things, using more like models from like other people. And then when I hit 10 years, it was sort of like, okay, when I hit 10 years of every day, it's sort of like, okay, the, the sort of chains are off. I'm going to use any model of anything. Like that's, that's to me the like baseline now. Like I, the, I, I look at it as like a paintbrush. Like yeah. the, this is the, the paintbrush now, like the blank canvas is me having a shitload of models. And luckily I've got like a thing with turbo squid where I could just get any model I want for free. So that's definitely very nice. But like, you know, I, I look at those as like, what can I do on top of that? Like it, assuming I have everything, what can I do to like take and like not just render a model of whatever? Because to me, that's not interesting anymore because it's sort of like I didn't do anything. I, just, I didn't make the model. So if I'm just kind of showing off a model, then it's sort of like, well, I didn't, there's no actually added sort of like thought there. So, you know, the workflow now is sort of like taking this library of models that I've built up and sort of like, breaking them apart and, and sort of like putting a head on this and putting friggin' boobs on this and, you know, putting them in this environment. So it feels like I'm playing with toys and like breaking the toys apart and sort of like setting the toys up in like, you know, a funny or interesting way and then taking a picture of it. That's how it kind of like feels like to me now versus like getting in the weeds with like, okay, I got a UV unwrap this thing. And like, mm -hmm. that's not any part of what I'm doing now not modeling anything like remotely more than three extrudes. Like it, it's very, very simple, uh, you know, stuff like that. It, it's very much like taking digital assets and sort of like, you know, fucking with them right. to, to make a story. And you're focusing on the big picture. I think that that's, I'm sure there's a couple of stupid people out there who are like, well, that's not odd because you didn't do it yourself. And it's just like that, I, I think that's such a subjective thing because I've wrestled with that over the years where you go back far enough, then it's like, well, the computer you're using a computer, so you're cheating. And it's there's you can make always things you, you can always go back because to be honest, there's a lot of people in the world that feel like any digital art is cheating. It's like, you know, what the oh, you just click some buttons on the computer. Anybody can do that. You just yeah. click some buttons. So there's always everybody's got their own line and there's no right answer like if you're like oh you just click some buttons on a computer that's bullshit real fucking art is oil painting you you're not fucking putting that fucking oil painting down you're i don't give a fuck that's not even art i can't argue with that that's their point that's to them that's what they think art is okay that's great then that's your definition of what you think art is awesome there's no like 
right answer there. So people acting like that, I will say one thing about that though, mm -hmm. is in our industry, like for your personal work, you can have whatever opinion on that you want, whatever is cheating to you, that's cheating. If you want to model everything, model everything. And like specifically when people are like, oh, you're going to model everything, this or that, it's like, if you want to model everything, please do, because I would love to use those models. Like I want you, if you were interested in modeling things, please model things because I want to use those models. But the thing I will say is clients, clients don't give a fuck. They do not give a fuck how you made it. They want you to make it the cheapest, quickest way. They don't give a fuck if you bought the model, made the model, whatever the model. So that's where I would be careful because clients just want it the quickest, cheapest, easiest way. So that's where you need to like lose that mindset because that will hold you back and you will, it will be hard for you to have a long life in this, in this, a long career in this uh, industry without utilizing the quickest, fastest, like easiest tools. Well, yeah. Like why make it difficult for yourself? You know, um, you, you can't do that with, you can do what you can impose those restrictions on yourself on, uh, you know, your personal work all you want. And there's very interesting, you know, lo-fi work or this or that, or people who are pushing the boundaries of primitive tools or whatever, like that's awesome. And global like, illumination was for a while, like that's not real lighting, you know what I mean? And, and now it's that's like, right. And, and it's like, yeah, if that's your view. Like, and you were like, fuck that, that's fucking cheating more power to you. Like that. I don't, I don't think you're wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's awesome. You should go fucking down that path as far as you can, because I would love to see what comes out of that. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, the client, the client want just turn the fucking global illumination on guy. Client yeah. doesn't give a fuck. Time is money. So, and That's they it. care about the end result. They um, care about the end result. I guess I, my final question would just be, do you deal with burnout or creative? I, there's so sort of different things, but um, you ever hear like a creative block and also do you deal with burnout? So the creative block, that's where, again, I, it goes to, I deal with creative block every single fucking day that it's like, what the fuck am I going to do today? Like right now, I, I kind of got an idea, but it's not that great. And I don't even know if I want to do that. So it's sort of like, well, what am I going to do? Um, and so that's where, again, I think the every days, if you are somebody who's struggling with every, with creative block, do 30 days. Don't be like, I'm doing this forever. Being like, I'm going to do 30 days of every day. It's manageable. It's got an end point. You can always keep going, but like, I feel like that having so, just a little taste of deadlines, I, I feel like will help you sort of like push through this because I feel like the only way to work through creative block is to work your way out of it. Like you're not going to just like, I, I personally think it's it, it, the easiest way is to just make a bunch of shitty work and fucking get that out of there and, and fucking, you know, keep plowing forward. In terms of burnout, there again, I feel like the every days are good because it's it's not about fucking cramming and like I'm gonna stay up for three days fucking straight and like fucking go ape shit and learn Houdini and fucking you know uh, this week I'm learning Houdini like <laughs> that's mm -hmm. not what it is like it's Look. about taking uh, you know a big long sort of like lifetime or career or whatever of, of learning and growing. And whittling it down into very sort of like manageable, like, I'm just going to work like a couple hours today or like an hour or whatever. And the other thing you could do is if you like want to do every days or something like that, like set a time limit. Be like, you know, you're talking about speed painting. Be like, I'm going to just speed paint for 30 minutes. Like, that's it. And there's going to be a time limit. And I'm going to make it very clear when I post this, this was 30 minutes. Don't look at this as something that I spent two weeks on. I spent 30 minutes. And so I feel like if you make that clear, people are like, well, it's 30 minutes. Like, I don't know. What can you do in 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like taking steps to like kind of mitigate that because yeah, once you kind of get burned out, it's one of those things where it's like, it's, I feel like it's really hard to come back from because you have this negative association with the thing that you used to love. It's not fun anymore. It's fucking painful. And so once you get to that point, it's, it's tough to come back from, you know? And so I'm very sort of like conscious of when it's, I've got too much on my plate and it's not fun anymore. And I, I dial it back. 
and, and it's usually it's not really with the everydays or, or it, sometimes it is if i'm putting too much pressure on myself with it it's just like okay whatever it is what it is gonna be today and like this or that so i i, I think that you know if you want to have a sort of long career in this industry it's very much something you need to like be cognizant of it's awesome man well, thank you so much um all the insights you shared have been really awesome and i appreciate that, that. i appreciate having, awesome. having me on here definitely been fun cool man well uh this has been great and i appreciate your time and where can people go to find out more about you um i think you can just type in people at this point in google and <laughs> something will, something will show up you'll find something It'll probably be grow. I would definitely maybe not do that on your work computer. <laughs> uh, you might want to wait till you're in the confines of your own home to, to find more information on me. Probably a good idea. No, this is great, man. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, dude. All right. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a lot from it. Please share this with others so that way they can benefit from it as well. I'd also love to hear from you in terms of what you got from this episode as well as if there are any specific questions you have around NFTs or non-fungible tokens that you want to see covered, because I'll be happy to put together more content related to those specific things in the coming weeks, because there's a lot of experts going to be interviewing about NFTs, as well as a lot of how-to videos specifically for you on how you can start selling your work today, both through NFTs as well as outside of that too. So lots of really cool stuff coming up. I appreciate you and I'll see you next video.